Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review and get this hooked up to a car uh, for the Autel OBD2 scan tool, and this is model MS300. I bought this off Amazon. It was $19.99. It was one of their less expensive ones, so I wanted to give it a try and see what it was like. Um, you know, the, the purpose of this is to hook it up to your car and be able to retrieve trouble codes if you have a check engine light on. OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. All cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the U.S. were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have this port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or light truck was sold outside of the U.S., it's still possible that you have this within your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. Um, okay, so before we open this up, let's take a look on the back here. Talks about the benefits and the features. Um, you know, it can retrieve your VIN number on 2002 and newer vehicles. Um, what else do we got on here? Uh, erasing trouble codes. That's, that's a good benefit. Um, you know, clearing the check engine light. No batteries needed. It just uh, pulls the power from the vehicle when you plug it in. Uh, that it safely communicates with the onboard computer. Um, that's good to know as well. Um, and that it's, it's small in size and conveniently fits in the palm of your hand, which, yeah, you can see. It's a, it's a nice little one that you could just put in any toolbox or drawer and have for when your check engine light might come on. You could plug this in, get the code, and then do the research on the internet to see what that code means and try to figure out if it's something you want to repair or take it into a mechanic. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up here really quick. Okay, so um, clamshell packaging. I'm just going to cut along the sides here. Be careful on this stuff not to cut yourself. Okay, let's get it opened here and see what's inside. There we go. There it is. The main attraction here. Um, got a cord that kind of curls up there. Here it is. Pretty basic. Um, let's see what else is inside the packaging here, if anything. See if there's any instructions or owner's manual. Alright guys, so they do give you a quick reference guide in here. They got a QR code where you can download the user uh, manual from digitally. It does say important uh, before operating this unit, please read these instructions carefully, so please do. Kind of gives you an overview of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read these off camera really quick, and then we will get this hooked up in the car and see what it looks like. Be right back. All right, guys, here's my car. It's a 2006 Toyota Corolla. Um, I got my OBD2 port right down here, so this is where we're going to plug the reader into. It can only fit on one way, so don't force it. Um, make sure to download the owner's manual too for the the reader. It's got tons of useful information, all the safety information. Um, definitely need to read that before you use this. Um, but one of the things it tells us is to make sure our car is off, and then we're going to go ahead and hook up the reader, which I'll do now. And forgive me, I'm trying to do this one-handed, so it might not be super smooth here, but. Okay, it's plugged in, and we can see that the reader says CAN OBD2. So now we can turn the car on, but do not have the engine running. You just want to turn it on so the power's on, uh, but you do not actually want to start your car. So uh, give me a second. I will be right back. Okay, guys, so I have the car on, but I did not start the engine, okay, just as it instructed in the manual. Um, the next thing it says to do is we're going to hit the enter button here, and then it's going to start scanning, which you can see it's doing right now. 
My car has had the check engine light come on and off for a while, so there's definitely something going on, but, um, you know, what it is, I'm not sure, but we're about to find out. Okay, um, here's the menu. Let's use the scroll option first just to go through these. So, um, DTC, um, those are the diagnostic trouble codes. Two, erase. So this would erase all of the codes, um, uh, you know, in your vehicle and would turn your check engine light off. Um, I am readiness. Um, so this has to do with your uh, emission system. Um, and just monitoring it um, if the uh, systems are all ready or not. And it explains all of this in the manual. Um, but this, we'll go through this in detail in a second. Um, we can read our VIN number. And if it was disconnected for some reason, we could rescan. So a pretty basic little one. Um, let's go into the DTC first. You can see that I don't have any current faults, but I have one pending fault, which means um, it's it's stored, and if it continues to read it, it will eventually turn on the check engine light. So the pending code is P0420, um, and this one would mean that I have something going on most likely with my oxygen sensor in my car um, or the catalytic converter. Um, I think it's the oxygen sensor, um, so I'll probably have to replace that this summer. But this this is where you'll find the codes that you have. So, you know, on my car, um, I just have one out of one code, and it's P0420. Okay, let's hit enter and get out of here. We're not going to erase it. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine on there, but this is where you would erase it if you wanted to. Okay, option three is I am readiness. That's your system status. Um, this is a really good option to use before you go uh, to have your car tested for emissions. Um, if we hit the enter button here, we can see that our mill is off. That's our malfunction indicator lamp. Um, just another way of saying your check engine light, but we can see that ours is off. And then we can scroll through. Each of the monitors here will tell us um, you know, if our car is is likely to pass emissions or not. We're going to want to see ready, yes, or NA on all of these monitors. We do not want to see not ready or no. Those would be indications that something's going on with the car that, um, you know, needs to be researched further. Um, but we can go through here, each of the monitors, um, there's an NA right there, so that means this one is not supported on this vehicle. Um, you know, so far so good on everything. Our oxygen sensor, um, the heater oxygen sensor, not uh, something on this car that's supported. Um, and there we are, back to the mill light, and it's off. Um, and then we can just hit enter to get back, and then we can scroll on to the next option. Um, right here is the VIN number um, option four for us. So this is where we would go in if we wanted to look at the VIN number. Like if we couldn't find it on our car, this would be an easy way to get it. And then finally, rescanning. If somehow this was disconnected or we wanted to get more up-to-date information, like if we thought there was an issue since we originally plugged it in, uh, this is where we would hit enter and it's going to do its rescan process again and, um, you know, bring back whatever new codes might have changed since we just looked at it. Um, and we know in this case, you know, we don't have anything current, but we do have one that's pending. All right, guys, so what do I think of this? I think it's a great little tool, you know, paying $19.99 for this. This does what I would want it to do. I'd want to get back the trouble code so I could look it up on the internet and figure out what that trouble code most likely meant and, and decide if I wanted to try to fix it myself or if I wanted to bring it to a mechanic. Um, you know, when you download the owner's manual, it's got a whole list of trouble codes in it too, and it gives you an idea of what each trouble code stands for. So, um, you know, yeah, the price was right. It's a nice little tool. There are ones that are more expensive that do more, but, you know, for a lot of cases, um, this does what most people need. And, you know, the size is right. You could easily fit this into a toolbox or a drawer. 
um, and just tuck it away until you need it again, you know, and have it when you do need it. So um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you did. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.